Well, today we are actually visiting with State Representative Jim Newberger, who is running for the United States Senate against Amy Klobuchar. Jim, thank you, and welcome to the North Star Oasis. Well, thank you, Mr. Williams. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, a fellow St. Cloud State alumni, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I grew up in uh, St. Louis Park, and uh, I went to Moorhead State, transferred to St. Cloud State, and graduated with a degree in mass communications and political science. Uh, I then went on to become a paramedic. I uh, worked as a paramedic for uh, 30 years for a level one trauma center uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, I've been serving in the Minnesota House for three terms, and I'm resigning uh, from my term at self-imposed uh, term limit so that we can take the fight to Senator Klobuchar because we really need change in Washington. Now, on, on your final night in session, you gave a really profound speech. You started off talking about an incident. Yes. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit yes. about that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's funny. People always ask, they say, well, Jim, how did you get into politics? And I've always been interested. My degree is political science. But sometimes it takes a catalyst, it takes a push to get you uh, into politics. Uh, mine was more of a, a fall than a push. I was, I was working as a paramedic. Uh, there was a crash in our service area. It was a very cold winter day. Uh, one of those days that, where the wind was blowing diagonal at about 30 miles an hour, very icy, really slippery. Um, and we got to this crash, and it was a van, and there was a man trapped under the van, and he was okay, well, we couldn't get him out, and we had to be very careful because it was so slippery. So we decided that we were going to call a big fire engine to come and park next to the van, and then we were going to attach chains to the van and then chains to the fire engine so that if, if the van slid, the man would be okay. Uh, so as we were waiting for the fire truck, I told my partner, I said, well, I'm going to um, get in the ambulance. I'm going to pull it around to the front of the crash to block the wind because it was really brutal that day. And my partner said, okay. So I got in the truck, uh, my ambulance, I pulled around to the front of the crash, real good wind block. Uh, I got out of the ambulance, and as soon as I came around the front of the ambulance, I hit a really slick spot uh, on the road. And my feet went out in front of me, uh, my hands went back, and I, I, hit, the, I hit the pavement really hard. Um, I, I was knocked out for a short period of time. I hit the back of my head, but I also shattered my left wrist. Um, I, to this day, I have a plate and 13 screws that hold it all together. Um, it was during the recovery time. Uh, I, had, I had four months where I was doing nothing. I was getting better, and um, I, was, I was a little bored, and my phone rang, and a local uh, a Republican conservative activist called me and said, Jim, uh, would you please get involved in the local Republican Party? And I was interested, but I asked her, I said, well, what's this going to cost me or what's this going to take? And she said, I promise you, one hour a month, that's it. That's all it'll take. Um, and three terms later? Three terms later, here we are. Now we're running for the U.S. Senate. So uh, if anyone ever tells you it's only an hour a month, uh, no, it's not. But is it worth it? Absolutely. Uh, every hour we've put in has been an absolute uh, worthwhile investment. Uh, the conservative cause in Minnesota has to move forward, so it's time well invested. You're just completing your third term. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest accomplishment at the State House? Oh, I would have to say um, the, uh, the, it would be a three-way tie. Uh, first of all, the Obama power plan, what they called the Clean Power Plan, uh, was put into action by Governor Dayton. Uh, and they worked really hard to shut down our power plant, the Sherco uh, 1, 2, and 3 power plants in my hometown. It's the largest power plant in the Midwest, and it burns coal. Uh, we fought for a couple of years, and we were not successful because the Democrats had the total majority. Um, but we didn't give up, and we were able to at least fight to, to get two of the three units replaced with a big natural gas plant. By doing that, we saved the tax base, and we saved hundreds of jobs. Um, getting Mark Dayton to sign that bill was a miracle and it was work well spent. Um, it was time well spent. Uh, that was a huge accomplishment for us. Uh, I would also have to say um, the work that we've done with post-traumatic stress for, for uh, EMS responders, for first responders, uh, working in EMS for 30 years, I can tell you it's an issue that uh, it, it's time has come. We need to help these folks. I know because I personally have experienced PTSD over the 30 years I've worked as a paramedic. Um, and I would have to say though, uh, as far as policy wise, um, my biggest accomplishment would be the emergency powers bill. Um, this was a, probably the most 
significant Second Amendment, pro-Second Amendment bill that's been passed since permit to carry. Um, right after Hurricane Katrina, uh, what was happening is that government units in the military, they were going around, they were ordered uh, by the government to go house to house, door to door, and confiscate people's firearms. They'd knock on the door, they'd say, do you have a firearm? If the answer was yes, they would take it from you. Uh, legally and lawfully owned firearm. These people were breaking no laws of any kind. Um, that's unconstitutional. These folks just wanted to stay in their homes and they needed some way to protect themselves and their families and basically this was being taken from them. Right after Hurricane Katrina was finished, um, the state of Louisiana was the first state to pass this bill, to pass this law that said you can't do that. Mm -hmm. If No matter what the situation is during a declared state of emergency, just because you want to confiscate our firearms doesn't mean you can. So they passed a law saying you can't do that. About 20 other states followed suit, and Minnesota is always slow on these things. Mm -hmm. uh, they tried it about uh, five years ago, um, and it failed. Governor Dayton wouldn't sign it. It didn't go through the committee process very well. It failed. Um, some of the um, pro-Second Amendment folks approached me and said, Jim, we really need someone who's going to fight for this. Will you please fight for this issue? We really would like to see this pass. I said, I'd be happy to carry the bill. Uh, we went through four uh, committee hearings, uh, some big House floor fight uh, battles on that. Uh, we got it to the governor's desk, and by golly, we got him to sign it. So now, during declared states of emergency, regardless of what kind they are, they cannot just simply confiscate your firearms just because they decide they want to do that. Um, if you are not breaking the law, they can't take your firearms. If you're already breaking the law, that's a different story. If they can already arrest you, you know, for, for looting or felony or whatever, that's a different story. But if you're just in your home and you have your firearms, they can't take them away. That was my bill, and I'm very proud of that. Um, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll never have to see that come to fruition. But in case it does, you're protected. So what led to the decision to run against Amy Klobuchar for U.S. Senate? A uh, simple decision. She needs to go. She really does. Um, and everybody, I've worked on the last two campaigns that ran against her. I helped with the, the Kennedy campaign. I was a volunteer in our area. And then I was also on the inside circle uh, for the Severson campaign, although he did lose the endorsement to Kurt Bills. But I worked for Kurt Bills, and we transferred all of that campaign knowledge to help Kurt. And I watched um, the mistakes that were made. And these guys are great guys. They worked really hard, uh, and they would have made great senators. But I'm the only one that's been in all of these battles. I know what it takes to beat Senator Klobuchar. She needs to go. And as a paramedic, uh, it's been ingrained in me. There's no such thing as a no-win situation. I can't walk into a situation and say, well, I'm not going to do this job. This is a job that needs to be done. I'm going to get it done. And I guess lastly, any uh, contact information if anybody wants to get involved with your campaign? Oh, I'd love to. Um, my website is just jim 4 us Senate. That's F-O-R, jim 4 us Senate.com. All right, Jim Newberger, thank, thank you for you stopping so by. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. it.